welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Anne Burton Brown, a model, as you can see, and history teacher. I'm talking a lot about influencers. So follow me and you will find out all sorts of information. Now, you haven't seen me for a while, have you? What do you mean you've never seen me? Of course you have. Anyway, I'm here now and so are you. I've actually been away, just a, a short break. Would you believe I went camping? Me, camping, oh, would you believe it? I only camp when it's warm. I don't do cold at all. But we went away, had a great few days. The weather was lovely. But of course it did mean that I've let you down. No influences. But hey ho, we've all got to have a holiday, haven't we? And I'm back, back with a vengeance. And today I'm going to tell you about Phryrene. Strange name, isn't it? It's Greek. She's not a modern lady. She was actually a fourth century B. C prostitute. Now BC, if you're sort of a bit confused, means before Christ. So not before Covid, but we'll forget that bit. Before Christ and it was before Jesus Christ was born. So I am talking over 2000 years ago by quite a long way. She lived in Greece. In fact, she was born in Athens. Now Athens at the time was a rather big city state. She was christened by the name, which I cannot pronounce, so I'm not going to try, Virtue. That was the meaning of her name. However, she had a very pale skin. So she was given the nickname Phryrene, which isn't actually brilliant because it means toad. Okay, well, <laughs> whatever. Still, she grew up into one of the most beautiful women in Greece. Now, you've got to remember that Greece at the time was a whole lot of big city states, powerful. They were always squabbling and arguing. I mean, you know, there was the Greek Empire. Alexander the Great took over masses of the world. And so each little state, big city states, little ones, were quite important to each other. And Phryrene was in Athens. She became one of the most popular prostitutes. She was beautiful. She could command a hundred times more than the communal garden ones. So obviously very, uh, how should we say it, clever, glamorous, vivacious, gorgeous, and obviously she was well equipped to deal with men. And she made her money through all her liaisons with wealthy Athenian males. There's a couple of stories of her. One of them was that when Alexander the Great, who you might have heard of in 336 BC, got very annoyed with the city of Thebes. Again, big city-state, walls all the way around it. They had a rebellion uh, against Alexander, who was taking over with his big army, and he was not at all impressed. So he actually, what they call, sacked the city. He destroyed it. And as a punishment, he killed off all the men and then enslaved all the women and children. So Phryrene thought, well, I ought to do something about this. This city has no walls. That means anybody can walk in and out. Thieves can come in. People from other countries can come in. The animals can wander in and out. It needed protecting. So she wrote to the officials and said, I am more than happy to pay to have the walls of Thebes rebuilt. But there is one condition. I need written up there 
this quotation. These walls were destroyed by Alexander, rebuilt by Firene, the courtesan. They wouldn't do it. Oh, no, dear me, can't, can't mention the C word. Ooh, ooh, whatever next. Oh, palpitations. No, no, no. No, that, well, that was it. The walls never were rebuilt. They didn't take her up on her offer. But what a wealthy woman to be able to say, I will rebuild the walls of the city. Just like now. Frinny was so beautiful that they claim the statue of Aphrodite, one of the most important Greek goddesses, the goddess of love and beauty, was modelled on her. What more can you say? She must have been stunning. However, at one point she did overstep the mark. Apparently she appeared nude at a religious ceremony. <gasps> that is not the done thing. You didn't do that. However popular, however beautiful you were, you did not do that. It upset the gods. And once the gods were upset, all hell was let loose. And the only way to stop that was you had to put the person to death. So she had to die. She had a trial. Her defender was the orator, so somebody who could speak beautifully. Hyperides, who just as it happened, was one of her lovers. Now, imagine the picture. There she is in court with all the Greeks who wore these sort of togas and some of them had laurel leaves and all sorts of things. All probably men sitting around looking very severe and important. And there's the beautiful Phyrene. And Hyperides goes up, pulls her gown tears it open and it drops to the ground. And there she is in the middle of a courtroom, naked. <gasps> Why? What on earth is he doing? Oh, good grief. Well, he was proving his point. He told Hyperides to walk round so the jury could look at her. You can imagine all these men, can't you? They were probably quite beside themselves. And he said, Look at this woman. She is the classical beauty. Aphrodite, the goddess of love, is modelled on her. Well, you know what they mean. How can somebody like that upset the gods? That was his defence. Well, believe it or not, probably because they were all men, it worked. She went free. They decided the gods couldn't possibly hate anyone like that. And she was so gorgeous, she must be on good terms with Aphrodite because she was beauty and love. Well, that's all I have found out about Phyrene. There may be more, but who knows? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that little jaunt. If you have, and you want to find out more, you know what to do. Press that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and have a good week. And I'll see you soon.